Hello everybody. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for stopping by. I'm so glad that you did. I um had a problem with my printer. It was not connecting with my internet. So the video I was originally going to put up this morning did not go up because we just got it connected. <laughs> Which is very simple, even though we went through all of the steps that the tutorial on HP told us and um yeah. My husband was able to do it like that. <laughs> Me, however, I am just frustrated, I guess. It happens. So anyway, I thought that I would do instead um, a little bit of a um, walkthrough of a haul that I have rec recently, um, or, you know, over the past probably month, maybe six weeks or so, um, purchased here and there. Uh, primarily at um, a place in the next town from us called Arcadia. Built, founded very, very early 1800s and um, still has a lot of the original buildings. Uh, and there are two streets in Arcadia that still have the original buildings and it's dedicated to um, antique and vintage shops. Fabulous. And we go um, mostly once the snowbirds leave because the prices come down astronomically. Oh, dang. I meant to grab something, but I'll show it in another video. So um, I've shown these before in another video, but it wasn't a haul video. It actually was just a video I was showing something. I don't remember what. But the first two things I got in Arcadia were these, even though they're not craft related, they're craft room related. I have two plants currently that are doing so well in here. So this is um, a vase, and it's uh, it reminded me of Bambi, and it's got the little bird, and, you know, the deer, and um, it's just a vase. So um, I dry baby's breath, and when I do, I just put it in a vase and let it dry. And then um, I'll show you a piece that I have here. I just let it dry, and then I'll snip it and use it for my journals. So I'll end up, you know, I don't have any to dry right now. This is already dry. It's a piece that I have to just clip and, you know, put away in my, in my drawer where I keep my dried flowers. But all I, that's all I do when I dry my baby's breath is that I put it in a vase. It stays white and it's, you know, pretty. So um, I'll have my husband pick some up at the grocery store and I'll fill it and put it up on my shelf and let it dry. Here's another little piece right here that I've dried and I'll just put that in my drawer and then snip it when I want to use it in my journals. Just an idea. But it was a dollar because there was a little crack here and um, I just thought it added to the character of it. She said it was about 1950s, um, which probably she's right. Um, it really doesn't matter to me. I just love the colors. They go very well in my craft room and it's very sweet. So I keep that up there with my plants. And then this is Cinderella and it says Cinderella on the bottom and it's got a number. And um, this was a dollar because it was chipped here, which I have no intentions of fixing because I think, again, it adds to the character. Isn't she sweet? I'm going to put a succulent in here. So um, I think that will look very, very nice. I just have to choose the right one. And um, there is one, it's called a jewel. And it actually, you know, drapes over once it gets, you know, big enough, it kind of drapes over. So I might do something like that because I don't want to take away from her, but I, I would like something here, you know, to drape over it. So that was a dollar, which I was really happy about that. So she goes on my shelf as well. And then I have, you know, just a few plants and then some containers that I have my stamps and things in. And then I got some playing cards 
Now, um, I'm kind of skipping around here. I think I'll show those last because I didn't get those in Arcadia. So, um, these. Um, these are wonderful. So this is a frame, um, you know, a, a cabinet card frame. I love it. I don't know, I, there was only one. I wish there were a dozen, but um, I loved it. So I know Tim Holtz just came out with some, or maybe he's already had them, but there's a 2024 uh, collection of cabinet card frames, um, which I think are really nice as well. I even think they have some stitching on them with like threads so you might want to look into something like that um i happened to see a video on his new 2024 collections and then i'm going to be scanning these and um probably putting them in some groups because um i, I really do love sharing look at the backs so um yeah eventually i'll scan them and and maybe put them into some groups or you know, whatever, because um, I do really want to share them. They're beautiful. Some are from the United States. Some are from overseas, Germany. Um, a lot of them I just, I don't know. But I love them. Look at this. What a sweet family. This looks like somebody's children. So she looks like to be the oldest. And then maybe him. Him and her. But just adorable. And then there's this one, which again is on that. This one is not as heavy as a cabinet card and does need a little bit cleaning. But um, it's beautiful. This is all embossed. And then this is like happened to have been glued on top. So she is just stunning. I love that one. And then this one is from Germany. But I love the cabinet cards. This they're very versatile and that's not yet. And then this one, which I think is really neat, the way that I've never seen one like this before. I'm not sure what I'll do with it, but I love it. Isn't that beautiful? And then she signed it, so she might have given it as a gift to somebody. It says 24, but it doesn't say what year. So I'm thinking 1924, probably. This one is definitely an antique, I can tell, because I have some of my in-laws in the 1800s, and I can tell by the clothing this who could resist look at that face uh edmund something cook junior is he not adorable and then this one is very very old and it is uh, Berlin, but I loved it. It's beautiful. Even though it's got this, it's just gorgeous. This one is from France. Mini. Aren't they cute? Uh, Wisconsin. Philadelphia. I'm not sure. It's hard to see. I love the edges on this. This one is 1890. It does have the date on it. 
and it's in French, so I'm not sure where. But isn't that gorgeous? And this one is almost like a tin type. I don't want to take it off, but it's it it's hard to to see it, but if you could see it and feel it, it's it's like a tin type, but it's on a cabinet card, so that's um unusual. Um, I'd have to really look into that. But isn't she beautiful? Love the clothes. So those are those. Great find at a very, very good price. What we typically do is I'll bring $25 in cash. And that will be like my limit. And then um, my husband will always bring you know, his debit card, just in case, you know, I see something that I can't resist. And for that time, I went over $8 because I did buy a tablecloth, which I didn't bring in here, but I will show it the next time. This was, it's 12 feet, it's a 12 foot roll, 25 cents uh, uh, wallpaper. I'm not sure of the year, but um, it's got to be pretty old. I mean, it's pretty. So it's a border. So maybe, I don't know. There's no paste or anything on it. So I, I don't know, but it's beautiful. <laughs> and there's 12 feet of it. So... I was happy with that. That's something John found. And it was a dollar. But you have to, um, you know, the thing is, is you only get to go in two or three shops because you have to go pretty slow, you know? So, uh, I'm just going to take that off because it just keeps coming off. So there's that, and then, um, let's see. We have this, which is fun. I'm gonna save the best for last. This is called the work basket. It was 15 cents, and it's just needle point and um, greeting cards knit flower doily patterns, um, crochet your way to New York and Bermuda plus a thousand dollar prize. We'll send you these two greeting cards, make 75 cents to $500 in your spare time. Knit and uh, kitten, crochet kitten. I just think it'll be fun to use in journals. I love needlework and it's just, huge and it's falling apart but it's fun so um yeah economy is the word <laughs> it's just fun so I'll have in, you know I'll enjoy going through it and you know cutting it up and using it in my journals or in collaging and things like that and just tucking bits and pieces into journals Bancroft's Easter Parade. Yeah. So, anyway, I love all these, you know, extra money type things. And, and then the patterns to make these are fabulous. And it's the whole pattern. So, you know, I may give it a try. Why not? And then you could use this as, you know, pocket or applique trim. Just fun, a lot of fun different things. And like I said, it's falling apart, but look at the patina and um, you know, all the different things you can, you know, um, recipes, just tons of things that uh, look at. I mean, that would be perfect for a journal. 
so I'll have to go through it and um, look at this. So pretty. Stunning embroidery lady in lace. So, yeah, look at tatting. The golden rule. Elegant and easy crochet. Enriched with J&P Coats metallic knit. Sheen. Can you imagine? Ah, oh, just so beautiful. Anyway, that's that. Um, and then I got part of the recipe book too. Oh, it's right here. So, I mean, this was some um, a dollar. And then this she just gave to me because it was just part of a falling apart piece of um, a very old um, recipe book. She didn't know what the rest of it was, but I thought the patina was great um, and recipes were fun, easy to make, orange ice cream and you know, just very odd and old recipes um, that I thought would be fun to kind of, you know, go through and see what I want to save. Peach cider, interesting. Um, butter and cheeses and how to make those. And then sandwiches and lunches, which were fun. And then there's some cobbler recipes in here and some chicken salad type things and molded beef, <laughs> veal loaf. So, yeah, I mean, I won't be making those, but pickled okra, how to pickle corn, um, custards and creams. I love custards, but anyway, so that'll be fun. And then... We got some book covers. I just thought they'd be fun for journals. I really loved the color. Um, and um, I don't know what this says, but I, I just I really love the color in the in the book. I don't want to really cover it, so we'll see what I come up with with this. Uh, it's a poetry book by Robert Brooke. The collection poems of R Rupert Brooke. Oh, I guess that says Rupert Brooke. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah. So, anyway, why not? And this one I loved. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. It's all like gold gilded. It's beautiful. I loved it. And then in here... It's just a bunch of, um, I think they're just like stickers or probably, um, just some, you know, random papers and envelopes, you know, I have no idea what I'm going to do with them, but, you know, the price was right and, um, I thought, well, why not? So, and then there's some popcorn boxes, which would be fun to possibly, I don't know, cover or, you know, cut, make a small journal. There's a milk box that was never used, you know, so we'll see. And I just love bags. So we have a coffee bag. Some postcards. I got a bunch of these. I'll show you in a minute. Some more postcards. X ray stove polish. Popcorn Coca Cola. A seed packet, which I think I might make a little journal. I have more seed packets. I'm thinking about making tiny journals out of those. Remember these? I do, anyway. I'm getting them from the, um, actually our milkman 
would deliver them. So this one was, um, let's see, orange and lemon. Isn't that fun? So fun. And then this one, natural tobacco. But, you know, it's, I don't know, it's going to make a cute something. I'm not sure what. And here's another seed packet. Five cents. And then some more cards, which are still in the plastic. Or probably had been put in plastic. Actually, I didn't even look at this, but there is a letter inside. So let me just open this up real quick because I didn't notice that. Heavens. Oh, here we go. Let's see what that, I hope there's a letter in that envelope. That would be so fun. I didn't even notice that. Hold on one second. This is exciting. <laughs> For your birthday, you're sweet, you're nice. Okay. I just, I really love these cards. I love finding little things like that. I hope there's a letter inside. That would be so fun. Maybe not. Oh, maybe it was just the envelope for the card. Yes, how fun. 1937. Oh, that's, oh my gosh, that's fun. I'm so happy. That's adorable. Let's see. Uh, mother, daddy. So somebody must have sent it to their child, their daughter from mother and daddy. How sweet is that? Love it. Love it, love it. And then this is uh, Nastrum. Must have had seeds in it. Or didn't, you know, it was supposed to be for seeds. And then some more of these. And then this book cover. And then... There were these, which I don't know. I, I like them. I don't know. They're not, I don't think they're old, but they're fun. It says hope and love, hope, and then somebody colored that one in. So that's a good idea too, to color them in. So there's those. And then, let's see, did I go through those? Yes, I did. And I went through this. Okay, so then, um, this, these I got at Goodwill. And this is Martha Washington's Book of Cookery, 1759 through 1799. However, I mean, it's, I don't know what the date is on the copyright of this, but it's got to be old because it is so... Look at, the, look at how it turned, the colors. It must have been in the sun or something. Maybe in a window or something of a bookstore. I'm not sure. But I love the book. I love to make tiny journals. Okay? So I just, you know, the MW I think is really nice. I love how worn the edge is. And I love the... Um, different there's some poems and there's um recipes and all different kinds of you know fun things you could add to a journal and then when i'm through i will make a little mini journal from that i'm saving the best for last which is coming up very soon and then this one is on quilting and i love it because it has a whole bunch of different quilting images that I can put into journals. Um, it's got a lot of poems about quilting. Evie, this is one of the ones I was talking about 
when I said that I was going to do a walkthrough of some things that I found. But I, I'm going to show you my best in one second. But I'm glad I never threw them away, my scraps of your uh, mine quilts today, which is so true. Look at that. Is that not beautiful? I loved quilting for years, but of course, I've never made anything so beautiful. And then, let's see, there's this one, which I just think is so fun, you know? And then maybe make a little mini journal from it after I decide, you know, after I read it, of course, and get some ideas and inspiration, and then I'll use it for some journals and then make a little journal out of the book. And let's see, then I have some greeting cards, uh, not greeting cards, playing cards. So um, these I got from Facebook, no, Instagram, from a girl on Instagram. So um, they were $12. And I love them because I, I put like my, um, I dye my own, um, seam binding and sari. And so I wrap, you know, the seam binding and things around it. And then I have, I just place them in a jar or at one of my tins, but aren't they pretty? And they'll go so well in different journals, you know? So I was really, really pleased and so amazed by the amount of cards and they're beautiful. They're just beautiful. I'm really, really pleased with them. I wish there were more of this one because I just love it. It says fall and the children going back to school. It reminds me of a Norman Rockwell. So there's those. And then I pulled a few from my dad, my mom. This one is like fishing and hunting. Um, uh, my dad used to hunt and fish, so I thought he'd like those. And Mother loves flowers and roses and things like that, so I'm going to be sending those out <clears throat> in the mail. So those are those. And that was a an Instagram find. So, and then my... Um, continued um oh, goodwill okay so these are falling apart but I know that they're pretty I mean I've seen them other people have purchased them I've seen them in walkthroughs they're dirty they need to be cleaned and I need to get you know get them cleaned up you know, dust them off and things like that. Especially the cabinet cards. I think that's where the dust is coming from. But anyway, I love them because they're sticker books. And, you know, a lot of the stickers I'm not interested in. And some of the stickers are missing, but that's okay. Um, but the card stock is wonderful. So even if I don't use the, you know, the, um, it's great card stock. So even if I don't use the stickers, I can use the card stock. And then there was this one. And then I can use the book cover, you know, for a journal. And there was this one, which is huge. And again, it's away from the, um, away from the spine. But there's a lot of images that I can definitely use, you know, in journals. Let me know in this description box below if you've ever had one of these sticker books. But, um... They seem nice. It's not, they're not real sticky, so I'd probably have to add some glue, but um, pretty, you know? I mean, some of these I won't use, but um, they're on cardstock. So why not? And I, like I said, I haven't gone through the whole book yet, but I will. And then I will take what I want and look at how sweet are those? So I'll go through it, I'll, you know, cut out, look at that. And the fun thing is, is look, 
Oh, maybe this one doesn't do it. This is a whole sheet. That's a whole sticker. This one, yeah, that's a whole sticker as well. So, yeah, I thought, why not? I mean, the price was definitely right. So we'll, I'll go through them and cut out what I want, put them in little, you know, little things and put them in with my stickers. And then the other one is put together, which is nice. And this one is the botanist, which I really, really love. So we've got desert, um, and then rainforest, and just beautiful. And like I said, some of them don't feel real sticky, but I'll just put some glue stick and um, use them. So yeah, that was good for um, Goodwill. And that was with, along with whatever else I just showed you from Goodwill. Oh, those two little books. And then, I think that was it, except I wanted to show you my, what I was saving for last, which my husband just brought the computer back in and put the computer right on top of it. So this was my most favorite. And I did find this, I did find some wallpaper, other wallpaper as well, but it's eh, not, it's, it's okay. It's nothing special or spectacular, but it's fun. It's got a good, you know, it's got a good um, uh, embossed, you know. It's not very big. It might make a good journal cover. I'm not sure. This is the other side of it. So, yeah. So, and then I got some other pieces. Uh, little, um, like eight and a half by 11. So, but this, this is a $50 book. She gave it to me for a dollar because it was like this. Because I brought it to her and I said, you know, I was wondering how much this was. It doesn't have a price and I wasn't going to pay $50 for it. And she said, oh, it's falling apart. She said, look at it, it's all taped, you know. And she said, why don't you just take it for a dollar? Huh, what? Oh my gosh. Okay, so. You're probably thinking, well, why is that your favorite? Well, because labors of love. It's so true. Now there is a page missing, but not a big deal. Look at this. The images are spectacular. It's copyright 1977. So I'm sure it's uh, first edition and it's all needlework, textile crafts, uh, Indians of North America, Industries, um, and it is fabulous. So we've got cloth, blankets, quilts, white work coverlets, linens for the home, early needlework, 1650 to 1830s. Just look. <laughs> These images are gorgeous. And then when you read about them, it's just so, I mean, I love quilts. I used to make quilts, nothing like these, but this one's spectacular. Ellen German chose a variety of homespun fabrics and mattress ticking for her quilt. The late date 1901 suggests she probably saved scraps of fabric over a period of years. It measures 75 by 86 inches, courtesy of Laura Fisher. Can you just imagine? I mean, just beautiful to me. It's just amazing labor of love. I love it. This is so sweet. This is a photograph of children um, working on their patchwork squares. 
in the 19th century. This photo was found in Massachusetts, which is where I'm from. This is in the Shelburne Museum. This one, I think too, is, this is a calico top contains a patch that must have been sent as the invitation to a quilting party. It reads calico party. Yourself and lady are respectfully invited to attend a calico party to be giving, given at the Kirby House Hall on Friday Eve, February 18th, 1870, New York State, circa 1870. It measures 19, uh, I'm sorry, 90 by 102 inches. It's currently in a museum. Is amazing. And here, you know, it's got the whole story in here. It's one of the invitations. Just amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing art. Almost a lost art. Not quite. I mean, I can't even imagine. So anyway, that's all quilts. I'm trying not to go too fast. This is a um, a Centennial nine by eight. It's the historical um, society. I think of I, Connecticut Lynchfield. I think. Um, I'll look at these images. How beautiful in a journal. But, let me go back here. Look at these. Gorgeous. Labors of love. Just gorgeous. So I won't be cutting into it. These are all um, knitting, I believe. No, crochet and lace. Knitting, crochet, and lace, yeah. So, look at this. Can you just imagine knitting that? Or even watching it be knitted. Look at these. Oh, glory. 1918. This is 1883 in Vermont. Knitted this lamb's... Mrs. Mary Jane Richer of Gaston, Vermont knitted this lambswool afghan in 1883. She included five panels of intricate cross stitch embroidered along with her initials and the date, 70, 72 inches by 69 inches. And it's in the Shelburne Museum. Look at that. Can you imagine? It's huge. Oh, here it is. One of my favorite pages. Mittens, they believe were, um, the knitter may have yearned for the warmer days of spring when she decorated these shag gloves with profusions of flowers, New England, late 19th century. Look at those. How beautiful. And all of these. And we have socks and more mittens, but there's one pair. Look at these hats. Uh, let's see. There's one pair I just needed to show you. Um, let's see if I can find them. These are all um, the tools and accessories. These are rugs. Gorgeous. These are all hooked and sewn rugs. My mother-in-law did some beautiful hooked rugs. Here they are. These are a rear pair of decorated her on mittens. The delicate moose hair embroidery is worked on smoked buckskin, an art taught to the Hurons by the Ursuline nuns, circa 1800. Are they beautiful? Oh my gosh. Look at this neat little needle book. The round needle book is an example of the type of perforated cardboard snails, smalls, that were very popular at the height of the Berlin War craze. Three inches in height. Just beautiful. Oh, just love it. Look at those. This is all beadwork. Cross stitch. 
uh, I forget. It's all needlework anyway. Oh, Allie, if you're watching, look at this. Beautiful. I hope I've been in frame. So, Evie, this is the book I was talking about. I'm so excited. Look at so many beautiful images. And um, it's flat. I mean, it may be showing glossy because I've got my light on and the sun is coming through the window, but I wanted to have enough light for you to be able to see the beauty that is in this book. I, oh, my mom has her uh, candle wicking bedspread still. I was so happy to see it in the ball fringe. It's good. It says, uh, trust in God. This is all embroidered here. That's not what my mom said. My mom doesn't say anything, but. So. Candle wicking bedspread, hand woven cotton, skillfully ruffled with a snow white wicking and an overall design of cornucopia flowers and foliage. It's believed to have been made by Nancy Stevens about 1850 in Alton, New Hampshire. 107 by 102 <laughs> inches. Oh my goodness. Oh, Lisa. I thought of Lisa. My friend Lisa lives in New Hampshire and she loves linens and laces. So I'll have to, I'll have to show her this as well. Anyway, this is my favorite find. As you can tell, I am definitely still loving textiles and yeah I think it'll always be my love you know quilting and even though I don't really do it anymore I am back into stitching which is fun I used to cross stitch a lot but I love the slow stitching it's um just very therapeutic this is so pretty as well isn't that beautiful just beautiful so anyway, yeah, and I just love Labors of Love. I just love that. Um, and this, it says it so many areas that I'll be able to cut out a lot of the words and use a lot of the phrases and the po. you know. Just, I don't know, even things like these. I just, I, I think that they'd be beautiful. This would make a beautiful pocket in a journal, eventually. Not anytime soon. I have to read it first <laughs> and just keep thumbing through it. But isn't it beautiful for a dollar? Gorgeous. So if you're interested, Labors of Love, Judith Ryder Weissman and Wendy Lavitt. If you want to take a screenshot or, you know, leave a note in the comments below if you'd like to know the name of the book so that you can look it up and possibly purchase it someplace online or ebay or someplace i don't know maybe even Amazon. i don't know i wouldn't pay 50 dollars because i wouldn't just pay 50 dollars for a book um that one i might <laughs> i might have but anyway folks that's about it i am out of time and i'm sure that you've had enough for today until tomorrow when my printer is now working and I will be back with a uh, tutorial. So until then, be kind, be sweet, stay safe, and God bless. Love y'all. Bye.